Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. When you're a kid, all you can think about is being in high school. When you're in high school, all you can think about is being in college. When you're in college, all you can think about is being an adult. And when you're an adult, all you can think about is being a kid again. Life fucking sucks. But for those few years of misled optimism, we have the Saturday morning hit Saved by the Bell. Before Hannah Montana, Lizzie McGuire, or any of those other high school sitcoms, Saved by the Bell was the first to fork out beautiful teenagers with hideous clothes saying horrible lines to an entire crowd of canned laughter. This is one of those shows that captured the essence of the 80s so well that sometimes seem like we've traveled back in time to that cherished decade to relive the fun and wonder that the 1980s had to give us. The only problem? It was made in the 90s! I mean, look at this, it's like a decade behind. Were they just stuck in a time warp or something? But oh well, this is what we thought high school was gonna be like when we were younger, before our dreams were shattered like Elizabeth Berkeley's career. What many of you may not know is that Saved by the Bell was not always called Saved by the Bell. It was originally called Good Morning, Miss Bliss, and the focus was not on the students as much as their teacher, Miss Bliss, played by Haley Mills. It ran for about a year on the Disney Channel and had some of the same cast as the original show, but it never caught on, and it was taken off the air after only one season. After that, NBC picked up the show and changed the title to Saved by the Bell, and thus we were given the high school character stereotypes that only unimaginative writing could bring us. For example, you got Zack. You know, the kid always getting into trouble with his harebrained schemes, but always manages to get out of trouble with his irresistible smile. That and a bucket load of hair gel. Seriously, that thing looks alive. <laughs> Next, you got Slater, the good looking jock, who's very similar to Zack in almost every way, except for, um, their names. After that, you got Kelly, the good looking cheerleader who has those insufferable on again, off again relationships with the main character. I know this is high school, but how many times can you break up with a person before they turn into a psycho and start stalking you? Three. Next, you got Screech, the nerdy little geek a doofus dork who, judging by his voice, holds the record for the longest time anyone has ever gone through puberty. Well, I thought I was. Do you think he was kidnapped by space creatures? Kelly, uh, hi. Oh, for God's sakes, will your testicles just drop already? <laughs> After that, you got Lisa, the fashionable self-centered mall brat who is the object of Screech's affection. You were great in the 100-yard dash. Oh, thanks, but I owe my victory to Screech. You do? Oh, yeah, I pretended you were chasing me. Ouch. Finally, you got Jesse, the self-righteous, vegetarian, politically correct, environmental, animal rights feminist in the group. She was the most unpopular character in the show. I can't believe my own boyfriend doesn't even support me. Well, why do we need more oil? I mean, auctioning off dates is just a glorified meat market. That's wrong. That's immoral. That's dishonest. Well, excuse me for living. <laughs> now, you might be asking yourself, haven't I seen her before, except in something more degrading and publicly humiliating? Yep. This is the exact same woman who starred in Showgirls, one of the biggest cult films to ever horrify audiences. Auctioning off dates is sexist flesh peddling and should be strictly forbidden. They go to a school principal by balding educational pushover, Mr. Belding. What is going on here? <laughs> that's a good one. Aw, oh, gee, Miss Wentworth, that's not fair. Oh, good news, Mr. Belding, good news! Your balls arrived! Is that true? So what can you say about the show as a whole? Well, it's hard to sum up the entire thing in general, so let's take a look at some individual episodes. Like how about the episode with the fake IDs? This episode starts off at the kid's favorite hotspot, the Max. Look at this place, it's like the 80s interpretation of the 50s. Zack helps out a girl with her flat tire, but it turns out she's over 18 and wants to meet him at a club. So Screech comes up with some fake IDs to get everybody in. Can somebody tell me what's the point of making a fake ID to show that you're 18 when you're so obviously 24? You know, we never did discuss your fee. Well, I really don't. Oh, yes, I forgot to mention. This show has the most obnoxious audience in the entire world. I mean, they go nuts about everything. What if something happened that they didn't know how to react to? Wrong! Last night Jeff went bowling with his roommates! Why don't you just mind your own business and stay out of my life? Or how about the episode where Zack has to find his family roots? It turns out Zack finishes a track meeting, having not worked up anything close to a sweat, but forgot he has to research his family tree for a school project. All he can find, though, is a picture of a Native American chief. 
So, like any high schooler, he bullshits his way through the report. Zach Morris, let's hear from you next. All right, Screech is going to assist me. Ready, Screech? Ready, Kimosabi. Oh, God. After digging through old family papers and pictures, I learned that I'm part American Indian. I come from a long line of fierce warriors and great hunters. Me, me. Mm. They roam the wide open plains in search of their daily food. Me hungry. Mm. And the award for most awkward, racially insensitive moment in Saturday morning history goes to... Saved by the Bell! And I'd like to thank my dad for giving me electric trains when I was three. Okay, so obviously Zach has to do the report again. But this time to help him out, his teacher sends him to a Native American named Chief Henry, who knows a little something about Zach's tribe. Why couldn't the white man and the Indians get along? Why can't the Arabs get along with Israelis? And why can't I get along with my ex-wife? <laughs> Did he just compare the battle of Arabs and Israelis to his ex-wife? Okay. Zach returns to give his presentation, dressing up as one of the village people, and gives a much more detailed speech. He never did explain why his people painted vaginas on their chins, but then again it is just a three minute speech. Wanting to tell his mentor the good news, Zach suffers a heartbreaking blow. A friend of ours passed away today. Chief Henry died this morning. Well, of course! How dramatically convenient. What do you think his Indian name was? Dies with poetic plot points? Fortunately, he appears to Zack in a dream and tells him that it's okay to stop grieving and move on with his life. Oh, I gotta go! I'm being fitted for wings! Wings? You mean like angel wings? So he's a Christian pagan Native American. Huh, go figure. But most people's favorite episodes are the ones that have a message to convey. Like the oil episode! Ah yes, you all remember this one. This is the one where oil is found under a football field and a rich Texan oil tycoon comes to drill. The kids all somehow dream up the exact same fantasy and imagine what it would be like to be the richest school in the county. <laughs> my darling! Let's all go to that beach. The camels are ready. Meanwhile, Zack comes across a duck named Becky and forms a powerful friendship with the innocent creature. I wish I didn't have to take you to the pond tomorrow. I'll come visit you all the time. When did this turn into an E.B. White's kids book? So let me be sure I got this straight. One story involves Texas tycoons drilling for oil, and another story involves a cute little ducky who lives in the school pond. Oil plus ducky equals- I mean, what could possibly go wrong? After all, we all know that oil is the safest and most non-hazardous of all of God's natural- OH MY GOD BECKY! BECKY NO! She's not moving, Zach. I know she's probably in shock, just please help us, sir! Yes, yes, Becky must be in shock! Surely she'll pull through, right? Right? Zach, Becky's dead. No. 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 About Becky Zack. She's where the oil can't hurt her now. Oil. Oil! Faster than you can say Texas tea, the gang bonds together to put that evil oil tycoon back in his place. The Cal Star and the school board will be partners in building a beautiful new bayside. It will cost you nothing. Yes, but will it bring back Becky? <laughs> will it bring back Becky? That's not true! What do you mean, young man? Yes, you, the lone hero in the back. 
Where are the oak trees behind the library? Well, I'm afraid we'll have to replace them. No, you mean cut them down and put up an oil derrick. Like this? Oh! oh. We'll yes, but what up. happens if there's a bigger accident and oil gets over everything just like this? Oh. And this is outrageous! Oh, this is most unorthodox! We don't want to go to school in an oil field. We already have a better Bayside. We just didn't know it until now. You duck-killing motherfucker! That's right, kids. Just remember, oil is evil. I mean, what the hell do we need oil for anyway? Oh yeah, to run our cars. But there's tons of other natural energy resources to run our cars, like solar, which is practically non-existent. So there's hybrid, which is far too expensive for anyone to afford. But there's electric, which is still on the developing stages. So for the time being, I guess we're stuck with oil. Evil, nasty oil! It kills ducks. Another episode I'm sure you all remember is the drug episode, where Jessie gets addicted to caffeine pills because she wants to pass geometry and do well in her new girl rock group. Wait, 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 wait. A girl rock group? How the hell did that come along? Well, it turns out Zach really thought the three girls had potential, so Screech dresses up as a female Irish janitor and records them singing in the girls' locker room. Finally, something realistic. I remember when I dressed up like a female Irish janitor and recorded things in the girls' locker room. Why don't you just forget I said that? Next time, bring me. So the recording is given to a record producer, who of course loves it, and the three girls decide to put together a music video for them. Oh god, help me. This is back when music videos didn't know they were insulting our intelligence, and also when they were, you know, popular. Say what you will about this song, but these special effects are just incredible. Like, watch this unbelievable stunt. Oh my god, how did they do that? There was one person there, and then suddenly there's another! Is this that mystical voodoo they talk about called a jump cut? Also, get a load of this. <gasps> Their faces are dissolving over the picture! Witchcraft! Feeling the pressure, Jesse continues to take her caffeine pills and becomes... Mildly annoying. It'll be great, we'll be awesome, we'll knock him down, right? Right? Yeah! Oh yes, I forgot to mention the popular music sting, which is played just before every commercial break. The weird thing is that the music is so bland that you never know if it's positive or negative until you hear the subject matter. Guys, we struck oil. Guys, there's been an oil spill! There's oil everywhere! This music's so vague you can put it to anything. Hey everybody, Kelly's top just fell off! Oh no, Lisa is pregnant with Screech's baby! Wow, Zach just saved a puppy right after his mother died! You see? The big scene everyone remembers is near the end when she has her giant breakdown in front of Zach. I just need one of these... Pills? You mean you really are taking drugs? I need them. Jesse, give me those. I need them, Zach. I yes. have to sing. Jesse. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so scared. Wow. I, I mean, wow. I had no idea that caffeine pills could turn you into such a horrible actor. Well, I'm getting rid of these babies right now. Good old fashioned mescaline for me. Oh, God, that suits. Finally, I want to talk about one more episode. This is my personal favorite. It's called Rockumentary, and it's this strange kind of behind the music look at the kids after they make it big as a rock band. You heard right, they make it big as a rock band. Just look at some of the clothes they wear. It's like the 80s are trying to die, but someone keeps trying to resuscitate them. Just let the decade die in peace. Look at this, when the hell did anyone wear bows on their jeans? Are you a fucking birthday present? But I digress. This odd little music documentary is hosted by Casey Kasem of all people, as he apparently has mastered the power of time travel to show you how their story began. Apparently the group practiced in their garage playing their instruments and lip-syncing rather horribly. Just look at Slater's drum work. He plays so well that the beats come out before he even taps them. Little did they know that fate was running by their door. 
Yeah, was there a record producer named Brian Fate who happened to be jogging past the garage? Hello, I'm Brian Fate. Alright, it's a little funny. He, of course, turns them into rock legends as they do concerts, sign autographs, get awards from bad impersonators. It's a dream come true. Now, one thing you might be asking yourself is, where's Jessie in all of this? Well, they saw how she did with the last rock group she signed up with, and, um... Yeah, they're not doing that again. So, of course, as their popularity builds, a seductive PR woman steps in and seduces Zack to leave the group and go solo. Letting the fame go to his head, Zack agrees with Yoko Ono and leaves the group to go do his own thing, as she controls everything about him, even the way he looks. Alright, now, I have to warn you. This next scene, where Zack shows himself in his brand new look, is... <sighs> is one of the funniest things ever put on television. It will cause laughter beyond your control. Just remember to breathe, inhale, and exhale. This has been known to kill people. People have actually died from laughter. I just want you to keep that in mind before you watch this. Take a deep breath. All right, let's watch the scene. The problem, they love you. They So, um, if you survive that, Zack eventually gets back together with his group and goes on to make music history. And then, of course, he wakes up because it was all obviously a dream. Thank God, because if I looked like MC Hammer and Prince's white love child, I would want it to be a dream too. You know, next year I'm asking for weekdays off. So that's Saved by the Bell. How does it hold up? It doesn't. It's stupid, silly, and loaded with idiotic cliches. But I will say that looking back on it, it is pretty harmless. I mean, I don't think it makes kids any dumber like some of the other shows I've reviewed on here. But if I was to sum up this show in one word, I would say that it's... Dumb. Stupid. Crazy. Dangerous. Stinks. And then some. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it, so you don't have to. <laughs>